There's death, there's destruction. Global news impacts us. We have to change the way we live. This is why we need independent media. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Hard Lens Media. We are live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube, Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch. Uh, maybe potentially a few other platforms in the future. Uh, who knows? Who knows in this day and age of censorship where supposedly uh, this is the end of free speech? Because that's right. We'll be talking about Elon Musk at the end of the, at the end of the show, but. You know, let's face it, we always have to stay one step ahead. So again, double check and triple check that you are still subscribed to us here at Hardlands Media. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe because YouTube likes to unsubscribe people. And let's face it, uh, YouTube is, well, they're in a bad spot. Look what happened right now to Jackson Hinkle. He can't uh, go live on his channel uh, because YouTube has... Again, giving him a strike, and he can't go live. We here at Hardlands Media believe in being consistent, and we stand in solidarity with Jackson Hinkle, and we do ask YouTube to remove its strike because we believe in free speech and in independent media, and it's unjust what happened to Jackson Hinkle. So, Jackson, if enough chance you do see this video, we stand in solidarity with you, and let's hope that that strike is removed so you can continue going back on YouTube Live. So there we go. Uh, with that being said, be sure to subscribe to us on Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch because – Again, we live in challenging times, strange times, and if you really want to help out Heartlands Media even further uh, and make sure that the lights stay on and that we're able to do all the work, because there's a lot of work that I want to do for Heartlands Media, building up teams, making sure the rest of the team here is set up, please consider being a Patreon supporter. By being a Patreon, you're going to keep Heartlands Media alive, and Patreons, you're pulling the weight. You are carrying the load so that Hardlands Media can continue to do this show every Monday through Friday. And without all of you, we would not exist. So one of the benefits is that you get some behind-the-scenes content. There's a lot of good stuff that we're working on here at the studio, some great projects. So if you want to know what's happening on Patreon or what we're doing here at the studio, consider being a Patreon supporter. Plus, another benefit is you get your name read on this awesome list. So let's pull up that list, phase if we can. Give it up for Stonewall Jack Wagon, Bonnie Cartwright, Dana Fairbanks, MD, Hoodoo Burns, Jackie Pregu, Dustin Price, Richard Jeffries, Nancy Kurtz, no relation to Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. We got Cheryl Toller and Jurek, Mark Lloyd Baker, Roy Hartley, Mike Termonite, Jackie, uh, Jackie Purpura, and Lewis. Thank you so much for being Patreons. You could be on this awesome list, too, and support independent media. Again, without all of you, we would not exist. And that's why we here at Heartlands Media are so grateful to have all of you uh, supporting us as an independent media network. With that being said, uh, give a huge shout-out to our tech priest in this year phase. Uh, we had him working on a project that I can't really talk about just yet. So if you are in the live stream chat... It is a mandatory thumbs up for FaZe. And why? Because FaZe rules. Do you understand? FaZe rules. FaZe, you are that guy. Thanks, no problem. No problem. See, I had to open up a beer for him, too, because it was just like, you man, you're doing such an awesome job. Here's, here's this tasty beverage for you, man, because there we go. So FaZe is doing some awesome stuff. Huge shout out to our moderators. With that being said, let's get started with, oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. we actually got uh, a YouTube super chat from Audit Press National Auditors uh, Convent. Uh, gave us two dollars. Uh, Prump Crow Punks Club NFT. I don't. I know those are words. I don't know what that means. I know what NFTs are, but <laughs> I, I don't know what all of that is, though. So there you go. But if you can, please give a thumbs up to Faze. So there we go. Again, huge shout out to everyone. Thank you for watching us on Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch, and on YouTube. However long we are still here for. With that being said, let's get started with the first segment of the day. So. I guess in the world of better late than never, um, perhaps I guess it could be said what took them so long. But Bernie Sanders and AOC were with the Amazon Labor Union. Uh, and right now, even as we speak, there is a second vote that is taking place. Now, again, knowing Amazon's track record of, well, screwing around its votes, this was a huge, you know, the first vote was a huge win for Amazon. And unfortunately, a lot of the progressive heavyweights, most notably Bernie Sanders, AOC, they weren't really there. And when the first vote was completed, when it did take, uh, when it did take place, AOC did retweet the ALU. And of course, she got a lot of pushback because she was asked to participate 
months ago. And the thing is, look, I find it questionable that she is showing up. She is there. Obviously, this is a midterm election cycle. So you got to put in the word of optics. What looks good? Does this, will this help out the Democrats or the progressives that are in the Democratic Party? The answer is yes. Now, again, I don't know if there will be any kind of accountability towards a- one of uh, AOC's team members and staffers when first approached about this subject. Uh, they said that that group looked a little thuggish, looked a little aggressive. And AOC brought up concerns of security, even though she had time to go on vacation, go to the Met Gala event wearing tax the rich. But she's there. So nothing we can do about it. The ink is already dry. Let's play this first video. If you can go to space, you can give our workers a bathroom break. Ain't that right? Yeah. If you can go to space, you can make sure that you're pe- treating people well and giving them solid health care benefits. Yeah. That they don't have a three-hour commute to and from work. Right. That they can That's afford right. the house that they can live in. That people don't have to be sleeping in their cars yeah. in order to work for Amazon. All of this is an indignity and an injustice and it has no place in New York City. And we're going to change that. And right here, our workers out here are going to change that. So New York, it's time to step up for our workers because we're going to make sure that they go all the way. All the way. We've got their back. We've got their back. And if Amazon and Blue Origin wants $10 billion contracts and if they want $100 million tax breaks from the state, well, they got to do their end of the deal too. All right? So we're out here to support them. We're out here to make sure that we've got our workers back because, again, New York City is a union town, and we're not going to stop until the United States of America is union-made. So thank you all so much. one of our other... All right. So the words she's saying, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue back. I, I agree with her words. They sound good. Where was all that energy when you were needed from the beginning? Now, again, better late than never, but I got a couple big question marks. Now, perhaps maybe this is a peace branch and offering an apology towards Chris Smalls and all the other workers there, you know, when they needed her from the very beginning. Here's hoping that the election results or the voting results uh, turn diff- – uh, at least are in – the union's favor this second round because again as we have said in the show and as we reported numerous times amazon likes to play some games likes to intimidate people and in all the stories there's it's always the same votes end up missing or amazon has first access to the votes i want to bring up a few people in the live stream chat here too frederick murphy says what will she actually do to help nothing um, we have, uh, Leo Los Troy who says, thought that wasn't her district. Well, she has some of her people who live in her district that work there. So, I mean, I guess she is there now. Again, I think we all can agree. Where were you from the beginning? But this is, this is a tactical move on AOC's part to rebuild any kind of, uh, misgivings. But then again, too, actions speak louder than words. She should have been there from the beginning. Um, who else do we have here? We got uh, Lawrence Johnson, do that crazy hand jive. Um, let's see. Well, who else do we have here? I just want to bring up a few other people here in the chat. Uh, Leo Slows Troy, no excuses, Kit. That's right. Uh, and Hugo Gutierrez, just trying to get uh, just trying to get credit AOC. That's what it looks like, trying to fix an image. Because I know in her mind, she realized that she screwed up. And I think a lot of people were taken aback that this was the first big win uh, for unions uh, against Amazon. April 1st of all days, April Fool's Day of all days, Harlan's Media's fifth birthday, Revolutionary Blackout Network's first birthday, because they're one years old now. Who would expect on April Fool's Day for the Amazon labor union to get such a big win? But they won. And the thing is, she had rightly so, should have been called out. I want to play this next video because here we have our good friend Bernie Sanders speaking to the people. You know, there's rumors now that he might be considering running for a third time in the 2024 uh, Democratic primary. Now, again, these are rumors, hearsay. I actually did a live stream about that last week in the evening. But then again, who knows how that will really play out. Let's hear what Bernie has to say. Today. 
what you have done in taking on Amazon and having this facility here in Staten Island, the very first Amazon facility to unionize in the entire country is an extraordinary achievement. You have taken on one of the most powerful corporations in America. They spent millions of dollars trying to defeat you. You are taking on one of the wealthiest guys in America, yeah. worth $170 billion, and you beat them. <laughs> and I'll tell you what this, what this struggle is about. It's not just Amazon Staten Island. This is the struggle that is taking place all across this country. Working people are sick and tired are falling further and further behind while billionaires like Bezos become much richer. Now when you're worth $170 billion as Bezos is, when you got a corporation that is making huge profits, you know what? You can pay your workers good wages, you can provide good benefits, and you can have decent working conditions, not what you got right now. So I want to tell you, you may not know this, you may not know this, but you have been an inspiration for millions of workers all across this country. Because they have looked at you and they have said, these guys in Staten Island, New York, stood up to an extraordinarily powerful corporation. If they could do it in Staten Island, we could do it throughout this country. All right. Again, words that I can agree with from Bernie Sanders. Um, these are, again, statements that really I can't in good conscience argue against. He is right. Jeff Bezos is the world's richest man. This this man has a space program that, unfortunately, he can't get the little rocket that he has all the way up. He only can get to the tip, so there we go. But that's all that really Jeff Bezos is. He's the world's richest man and built a corporation in which a lot of his workers have been exposed to towards the pandemic. But also there's been numerous reports on how these very same workers have been injured on the job, died on the job. There's so many reports about abusive work practices taking place there. So, yes, Jeff Bezos should need to be confronted. But again, here's the thing that I'm seeing in the live stream chat and stuff that I saw over the weekend, especially when they did show up there. I think in many ways, this is what Chris Smalls wanted. He wanted the, these two leading progressive Democrats to be at his event, to bring more cameras, to bring more awareness, because this second vote will be a total toe slug match. This is something that Amazon quickly wants to get rid of. They want to make sure that there are no unions. I'm all for unions. I'm all for worker co-ops specifically, though. And I think at this point, the more cameras and more attention that he is bringing to this fight, the better. However, this is a midterm election cycle, and they are showing up there when those two should have been there from the very beginning. Consistency is key. And you could say all the great things on a platform. You could say all these things that can actually make an impact. But you need to show up there when the people need you the most. When there are no cameras. When it will go up against the party. Because, again, money in politics. The same people who donate to the Republican Party are the same people who donate to the Democratic Party. And if you don't think that Jeff Bezos... Jeff Bezos himself is a donate to Republican and Democratic leaders, congressmen, senators. Then you're living in a fantasy world. And Jeff Bezos and his corporation are going to make sure they're going to lift up Olympus to make sure this union fight is ending, that it doesn't happen again. And so I wish the workers all the best in this. But let's have democracy in the chat. Let's actually have democracy in the chat, folks. And you can be creative with your answers, too. Type 1, if you think AOC and Bernie Sanders showing up to the Amazon Labor Union uh, rally is going to be effective and there, there won't be anything uh, in it for them. Type 2, if you think this is just a move for the midterms and that it is too little too late. Be creative with your responses, too, uh, but participate in our democracy. I know, foreign concept, foreign concept. So let's go ahead and pull up this next tweet here as well. Uh, this was uh, earlier today, um, you know, from Chris Small's Twitter account. 30 minutes to go. Let's do this again. 
at Amazon Labor. And this has everything in relation to do with the vote that's going to be taking place. So again, um, let's pull up this next tweet here too, because I think a lot of people are making assumptions. I think what Chris Smalls is trying to do, he's trying to get all his keys of power together so that he can lead this momentum forward. Because this is the second fight he's going to have to do with Amazon. Amazon's going to do everything they can to derail this fight. Chill Twitter fingers. It's workers running uh, this crap over here. Uh, from here on, you're looking at the new school of the labor movement. I want to take his word for it. Uh, there's people saying that AOC and Bernie Sanders are going to, or the Democrats are going to co-op in any kind of movement. Now, we've seen this happen before uh, with the Democratic Party. I will be surprised if the Democrats don't try and get involved in some way or try and derail it. But I have to have confidence in Chris Small's leadership and in his team that they're going to do the right thing. But the writing is on the wall. In fact, let's have democracy in the chat again one more time. Let's have a little one more democracy in the chat before I pull up this article here. Type three, if you think the Democrats are going to co-opt the movement. Type four, if Chris Smalls actually has this and that he will be effective in running it. I am concerned about that because, again, let's face it, anytime the Democratic Party can get involved in something, they're probably going to co-opt it. But I have to have confidence. I have to have hope. The audacity of hope. I know. Foolish. Foolish to hold on to hope. But I have to have hope in Chris Smalls' leadership. So there we go. Uh, going forward, uh, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up this article right here in regards towards what's happening. So, national labor leaders rally with uh, ALU organizers ahead of second union election. So here's what's happening. And we might get the results uh, tonight or tomorrow. Here's hoping for all the best. I would love to report good news about Amazon once again getting a slap in the face. Uh, national labor uh, national labor uh, leaders rally with Amazon Labor Union, ALU organizers in Bloomingfield uh, Sunday ahead of what could be the second historic union election. A host of union heads from around the country, including Association to Fight Attendants, uh, CWA President Sarah Nelson, American Postal Workers Union President uh, Mark Diamondstead, and American Federation Teachers President Randy uh, Wintergate addressed a crowd of about 100 people outside the tech giant's LDJ5 facility where workers will, wor uh, will vote whether to unionize this week. We stand shoulder to shoulder with you, Diamondstein said uh, to the ALU organizers. You made history a few weeks ago. You inspired workers all over this country. You inspired unions all over this country. But you know it's the beginning. In early April, the ALU won an election at Amazon's JFK 8 facility in Bloomfield, with 55% of the vote becoming the first Amazon workers in the nation to successfully organize. Amazon has yet to recognize the union and has objected to the victory, alleging organizers threatened workers unless they voted in favor of the union, according to court documents. ALU has denied those allegations, to which I have to say my little twisty twist on this is Amazon has done that before. There has been reports and coverage about Amazon threatening its own workers, having cameras in the voting booths in different areas of the country when there was a, a, an attempt to form a union at some of these Amazon facility centers. That has happened on Amazon's part that they did to their own workers. I find it ironic now that Amazon is trying to say, oh, well, Chris Smalls and his group are doing that. Mm. Amazon, really? You've done that before. And it's quite asinine for them to actually make that statement. But again, again, this is a billion-dollar corporation, and now there's a union forming. They're afraid. So there we go. So earlier this Sunday, Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, joined the ALU organizers for a separate rally ahead of the LD LDJ5 election. That vote will run through the week, and officials with the National Labor uh, Relations Board will count the votes starting May 2nd. So again, here is hoping that they are successful. Uh, this is our one chance to improve our livelihoods, to be part of something truly great, LDJ5 organizer uh, Maddie Welsey said as she called on her fellow workers to vote for the union. While Sanders and uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez left shortly after the morning rally, why didn't they stay? Gee, Bernie, AOC, you should have stayed a little longer. Uh, several local politicians and candidates attending the evening rally, including public advocate Jermaine Williams, Comptroller Brand Lair, uh, Lander, State Senator Jessica Ramos, and Congressional candidate Brittany Ramos uh, uh, de Barros, and State Senate candidates Jessica Scarilla Sampton and Bianca Rapichud, uh, ALU President uh, Chris Smalls endorsed uh, Ramos de Barros' uh, candidacy earlier this year. 
And on Sunday, she said ALU's organization efforts represents the Staten Island she knows. Staten Island is worker country. Uh, she told the crowd, Chris and ALU are showing you that before your very eyes making history over and over and over again right now. So, all right. This is going to be a fight. And we'll find out the beginning of next month in May, the merry month of May. I would love to report that kind of good news that the ALU has successfully won. I hope that there is uh, tight security and that Amazon won't be playing its games that we've always seen it done. So I think as a final note for this, this will be your personal opinion. You can participate or not. Democracy in the chat. This is just feelings. And I hope, I hope that they do win. Type 5, if you think the ALU will win successfully. Type 6, if you think that Amazon's going to play its games and nothing's going to happen. I'm going to vote for 5. That's my vote. I have to have the audacity of hope because something has to change. There we go. With that being said, we're going to move on now to our next segment. Before we do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Huge shout out to our moderators and huge shout out to our editor, Faze. Look, folks, Patreon show, you learn some behind the scenes content and you learn what we're doing here at 99 Perspectives, what's happening as World Perspectives Radio Chicago, and to another extent, Chicago Corner as well. And the amount of work that FaZe and Daniel have done here at the studio is great. By being a Patreon supporter, you're making sure that Hard Lens Media can continue to contribute to 99 Perspectives and so that we can build our media team so we can actually go back to what we used to do, and that is original reporting and doing field operations out there. So, again, if you support independent media, please consider being a Patreon supporter. We got something on Rockfin. Let's acknowledge Rockfin here real quick. We got uh, Dominique Perea, tip $2.00. There is absolutely no reason to trust a rhetoric of politicians who only pretend to listen to their voters during election campaigns. Instead, we need to elect people who, li who listen and respond to us every day they are in office. A new political party will show us how to elect honest and responsive representatives. Independent party, uh, Independentvoterparty.org. If you're not subscribed to us on Rockman, you won't be seeing some of these chats. Again, shout out to True Democracy Now! And shout out to Roger Meadows, who is again doing a lot of great work as well. Let's move on now to our next story of the day. And I, I, I literally love this. This, this, is, this is good news. Look, in this country, if you do the right thing, you're punished. If you're a whistleblower, if you're a journalist, if you're an activist that actually gets things done, you're the enemy of the state. Corporate media will vilify you. We have, again, a weak, weak, weak system. Money is speech. Corporations are people. Corporations and big money can buy our politicians, be it in the United States Senate or House, the Office of Presidency. We see it happening in our judicial system. But if you hold out, you can make it. Here's one person who did the right thing. This is Stephen Donziger. Let's pull up this tweet right here. Now, let's keep it up here, but I want to give a quick reminder who Stephen Donziger is. Stephen Donziger won against the Chevron Corporation. He made sure he held them accountable for the pollution that they did to the indigenous tribes in Ecuador. Now, I think we all know the dangers of these oil spills. They have a long-lasting impact on the environment and on the health of the people. Steven Donziger won. But what was his reward? Praise from the media? Cheers from our elected officials? No. Vilified. Wrongly accused. Wrongly put into house arrest. Wrongly went to jail. He didn't have to go through any of that. They wanted his uh, list of contacts. He wanted his uh, all of his information from his laptop, and he couldn't do that because, again, lawyer confidentiality. He did the right thing. This is a man who did the right thing. And here's his tweet right here. I'm sure all of you see it too. After nearly 1,000 days, God damn it! 1,000 days? He should, not, he should not even serve a millisecond like this. Nearly, after nearly 1,000 days, locked up. God damn it, man. Please know I could not have made it without you and your letters, visits, and kindness. Thinking of tonight of the indigenous people still victimized by Chevron in the Amazon. Tomorrow, my half-life ends. Time to fully live. There he is. Let's play that video. 
Hey everybody, it's that time again. The last time I made a recording like this was October 27th of last year. It was the day I literally reported to prison for a six month sentence. Well, that six month sentence ends tomorrow. Um, I've been in detention now a total of 992 days. Tomorrow will be day 993 when it all ends. And I want to talk to everyone tonight, the night before the end of my sentence, to say thank you to everyone. I could not have gotten through this, me and my family, my wife Laura Miller, my son Matthew, um, without the support of each and every one of you. I mean, it's just been amazing how much that together we've grown this campaign to hold Chevron accountable for poisoning the Amazon rainforest. I also am thinking about the people of Ecuador, the people in the forest, the five indigenous groups, the dozens of rural farmer communities who continue to suffer the effects of Chevron's poison every day in their daily lives, from the air they breathe, to the water they drink, to the food they eat. Thousands have died of cancer um, since this case began 28 years ago, and Chevron still refuses to pay the money it owes to the people it poisoned. And one of the things we're going to focus on once I hit the streets tomorrow and get my freedom back is making sure there are lawyers in place who can force Chevron to pay the judgment to comply with the law per these various court orders. I also want to say that even though I'm free, I'm not completely out of the woods. Chevron maintains a civil case against me. We continue to raise funds both to protect me and my family and other lawyers from Chevron's attacks and also to make sure our broader legal team has the resources it's going to need to make sure Chevron complies with the law and pays the judgment that it owes to the people of Ecuador. So this is a big, big day for my family. It's a big day for all of us. It's a big day for my clients in Ecuador. Um, tomorrow morning, I go back, go back to the halfway house, turn in my phone, and then they give me my release papers, and that's it. So we'll, we'll be reporting back tomorrow. But again, thank you so much to each and every one of you. I love you so much. Um, this has been an extraordinary experience. Painful, yes, but much more empowering than painful. We'll, talk, we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks so much. I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to pause that at all. He has every right to speak out his mind and his heart. I want to pull up this uh, next uh, tweet right here. Again, three legends who helped me get through 993 days of detention. Outside court during my private prosecution orchestrated by Chevron in May 2021, our spirit prevailed. Deep thanks to Roger Waters and lawyers Ron Kirby and uh, Marty Garbus. Again, let's actually get, I know we can't focus on the photo. I mean, maybe we can get a little bit of it. There they are. Again, huge shout out to Roger Waters, who's been a great voice for the people. Shout out to Steven Donziger's legal team. Um, you guys were soldiers through and through. Um, thank you. But we cannot also, we cannot also not forget about the victims in Ecuador who are still suffering. Chevron got away with it. Chevron is able to buy our politicians and our judicial system. And look what they did to Steven Donziger. If they could do that to Steven Donziger, they could do that to anybody. And there are Democratic and Republican lawmakers. That's right, Vote Blue, no matter who. I said there are Democratic lawmakers that take money from Chevron who are okay with what happened to Steven Donziger. All that liberal outrage. All this, oh, we got to do something to stop Trump. Oh, don't worry. The Democratic Party is all on board with Donald Trump and all these corporations and these politicians and the system that we have. And the real heroes are always punished. I want to pull up this next tweet here, if we can. Steven Donziger, right here. Breaking, it's over. Just left release papers in hand. Completely unjust. I spent even one day in this... <laughs> cascade situation not looking back onward there he is he's free he's free he shouldn't have even served a millisecond shouldn't have served any time at all let's pull up this next uh, tweet if we can or again Stephen Donziger purveyor of truth against power you know so here we go. I didn't fully realize what freedom was until uh, it was taken away. My thought, my my thoughts in those first moments after release. Let's play it. So I just came out of the halfway house. It's over after 993 days. These are my release papers. All they really say is I'm, I'm not on probation or under any kind of. 
out of supervision anymore. Woo! So I'm heading out of here, um, back home, start trying to live, live my life again. Thanks again to everybody. This has been extraordinary. Love to everybody. So I just came out. All right, of so the video is going to be repeating itself, but you know, well done, Stephen Downs here. You know what? If anyone deserves to have a party, it's definitely you. I think we have one more tweet uh, from that, if we can, or if, if it's still up there, or is that the last one? It is the last one. Oh, how unfortunate. All right. Well, he's actually been hosting a live stream event. I should have put that in the show notes. Apologies for that. Oh, is that it right there? Oh, there it is. Great, great. Okay. So there we go. This is a, a recent tweet here. So, hey, party it up, Stephen Donziger. Breaking. Please join us tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Manhattan to celebrate my freedom after 993 days of detention at 24, uh, two, uh, two, <laughs> 245 West 104th Street. We'll be live streaming on my Twitter and Instagram account, uh, Freedom Block Party. Oh, look, there's Chris Smalls or Steven Donziger and Susan Sarandon. Oh, the, the vote blew no matter who's greatest villain of all time. She's responsible for destroying Hillary Clinton. Now, you guys deserve to party it up. Uh, enjoy every second of your freedom, Stephen Donziger. We here at Harlan's Media salute you. In fact, mandatory thumbs up from everyone in the chat. He shouldn't have served a single second behind bars. This is some good news. I'm, I'm happy for him to be free. I'm happy that he is finally able to live his life, but the fight isn't over. What he went through was severe injustice. And the amount of mental anguish he might have gone through, that is just torture unto itself. How it severely impacted his family, his friends, his livelihood. It's madness. Steven Donziger, you're free. Enjoy every second, my friend. That being said, we're going to move on now to our next story. Uh, before we do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that ring bell notification. Again, Harlens Media uh, is an independent media network. If you want to keep us around, keep us alive, please consider being a Patreon supporter. It does help us out. Um, the censorship is very real, unfortunately, and independent media is always put on the chopping block. Be sure to subscribe to us on Rockfin, Odyssey, and Twitch as well. Uh, we are looking to expand onto different platforms. And by the way, uh, let me give all of you just some major news. So, Starting next month in May, the show every Monday. So the show is going to still be live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, of course, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, but the first half hour show will be on YouTube and then the rest of it will be on Odyssey, Rockfin and Twitch. Because, look, there's some stories and subjects that I want to talk about. And I am tired of living under the jackboot that is YouTube. Um, I have a team to take care of. I have to make sure that Harlan's Media is going to be contributing to 99 Perspectives. I have to make sure that everything is still running efficiently. And getting another strike, it's not its not part of my plan. So first half of the show will be on YouTube, and then the rest of it will continue on through Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch. Uh, that way we can talk about more hard-hitting subjects and stories, which is long overdue. And uh, that's how it's going to be. So if you haven't subscribed to us on Odyssey and Rockfin, please do so. Uh, this is the one way we could stay a step ahead of the censorship because I'm tired of playing this game with YouTube. They want to play the stupid game? Fine. I'll play the stupid game right back with them. So there we go. All right, folks. Uh, with that being said, let's get started with the major news of the day. So it's finally happened. Um, Elon Musk has bought Twitter. And... I know there's a lot of people who don't like Elon Musk, right? But the current crop and head management of Twitter, all those people who are running it, they're just as bad. Perhaps, dare I say it, even worse, because apparently, according to a lot of reports from Elon Musk's own personal opinions and talks about Twitter, the upper management doesn't know jack crap about how to run their social media platform. You have a village idiots running the whole thing. So... What can we expect to happen? Either one, nothing fundamentally changes. Uh, two, all the uh, blue check marks and people saying, we're leaving Twitter, are right. Or three, Elon Musk changes it up. Maybe he supports free speech. Maybe he will do something good. I don't know. We have to see how this plays out. If 
he's able to make Twitter into less of a cesspool. Good luck, Elon. I don't think you're going to pull that off. Then, okay, we have to look at this. This is how things are. Unfortunately, we live in a country where billionaires can buy it, whatever they want. But if you're worried about Elon Musk buying Twitter, you know, I think a lot of us should be more concerned about Bill Gates buying all the farmland. Again, we'll see how this all plays out with Elon Musk. But first, I want to bring up the words of Glenn Greenwald, especially in regards to this ridiculous outrage that we're seeing uh, from a lot of these blue check marks who are saying, we got to leave Twitter. Because Twitter's no longer good. It never was, you jag off. So let's play this first video. I, uh, this is why I think it's important, this this episode is, he's proposing a lot of changes, almost all of which are uncontroversial. Things like getting rid of bots, of making the verification process easier, providing an edit button. The one proposal that he is so controversial and that has generated all of this upset and outrage among the media class is he wants to make free speech values more predominant to erode and roll back what has become a very aggressive censorship regime where the range of views that you're permitted to express is constantly contracting. And it is bizarre to me, Howie, that journalists who traditionally have prided our, uh, ourselves on being the defenders, the frontline defenders of free speech and press freedom values now, at least in many sectors, seem to be the leading crusaders in favor of more censorship, of silencing uh, dissident voices, of silencing and deplatforming their competitors. And clearly, the horror about Elon Musk taking over Twitter, a platform most important to media elites, as we just said, is all about the fact that they rely on the heavy censorship hand for managing the discourse and for getting rid of rivals. Well, there's no question that most of that is aimed as conservatives, and I have no doubt that if Musk does succeed, uh, that he would lift the ban on Donald Trump, for example. But what you call censorship, many journalists will say, look, we fear that Musk is going to ease up on the regulation, and by the way, Musk doesn't say he'll have no content moderation against hate speech, against bullying, and against misinformation, although misinformation obviously can be debatable as to what constitutes misinformation. Well, I think it's a crucial point, though, is, you know, the people who say that they want to regulate social media to eliminate disinformation are the same people who spread the Steele dossier. They're the same people who told the country falsely two weeks before the election that the Hunter Biden emails are the byproduct of Russian disinformation. Over and over, these are the same people who propagated so many frauds in the name of their partisan agenda. What is hate speech? What is disinformation? These are very elastic terms, highly susceptible to abuse. And I think think the core value of the First Amendment right. should apply here, which is we let the public decide. You give the information to the public, have a clash of ideas, and the truth will prevail. All right. All right. So Glenn Greenwald is making a lot of points, especially about the censorship on Twitter. Um, the censorship is severely a problem, especially for independent media on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. I've, you've all heard me rant numerous times about the dangers of censorship. Uh, but the thing is, what we're seeing the pushback, especially towards Elon Musk getting Twitter is, or at least now owning it effectively, is you have your coveted blue check marks who think that, oh no, more free speech means more, more chaos, more, uncon more uncontrolled madness. And the thing is, we've been seeing that from corporate media. Corporate media has been giving misinformation. Look at Case Study QB's Insta uh, not Instagram, Twitter account. If you go in there incognito, again, you're going to see a lot of his posts heavily censored, or you won't be able to view them. Because Twitter, in its infinite wisdom, says that everything that Case Study QB has posted is violence, has questionable material, sensitive material. It's not safe. Uh, better be careful. Better be careful, Case Study QB's Twitter page. In fact, let's go and pull it up. FaZe was kind enough to put us in incognito mode. That's Case Study QB's Twitter page. Now, there it is once you remove it. Now, what's so controversial? What's, 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 what, what, what is, what is he posting? Oh, hey, look, there's that wonderful montage video of everyone giving him a shout out from Brianna Joy Gray to Hard Lens Media to so many other people in independent media, right? What else is he posting, FaZe? Oh, something from MSNBC, huh? What else? What, I, I guess I guess he's posting, oh, he's posting stuff from corporate media, huh? 
That's a problem. That is a severe problem. Again, MSNBC, I, these are authoritative sources, but at least according to the Twitter mindset, oh, there's Warren. I don't want to look at her. Uh, get, get her off the page. Get her off the page. <laughs> get her off the page. We don't want to look at her. We don't want to look at her. No. I don't want to see that snake. No, I don't want to see that snake. Anyways, look, that, I mean, again, Twitter is a cesspool. But if Elon Musk is truly on board for free speech, okay, I want to see what he's going to do. If not, look, folks, we've seen this before. Billionaires screwing over people. This is America where the rich control everything. It's madness and stupidity, and our elected leaders built it and let it happen. Our Supreme Court opened the gates to let it happen, which is why I'm all for co-ops, which is why I'm for also alternative media platforms. If Elon Musk can turn this thing around, fine. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I want to see what he's going to do. But you got blue checkmark people saying, oh, no, I'm against free speech. Oh, no, I'm against what's going to happen. And look what's going to happen with if, if there is this opportunity for independent media to finally get some more stable footing. So be it. Let's pull up this uh, little video segment where, again, this is uh, Glenn Greenwald uh, with Brianna Joy Gray. Let's play this video. When CNN Plus was shut down, mm -hmm. people are very, very affected by what CNN does. A lot of people hate CNN and believe its journalism is toxic, including myself. So they were celebrating the failure of CNN Plus because it's a failure of a certain kind of journalism they believe harmful. They were immediately lectured sanctimoniously by a bunch of journalists. You're not allowed to celebrate this. People have lost their jobs. The same journalists who a year ago were demanding that like nurses and truck drivers be fired by the hundreds of thousands in the middle of a pandemic because they refused to get a vaccine. We're always being told our empathy, our like concern, our emotions have to go to the richest and most powerful people in the society and not to the most marginalized. What I, concerns me is this was a political operation designed to punish a private citizen for having bad politics done under the guise of journalism. So, look, I can't argue against what Glenn Greenwald is saying. Now, I know there's a lot of concerns about this, especially with uh, Elon Musk now having control of a very large and influential platform. But we have to see how this will play out. I want to pull up this article here from the New York Post, where, again, a lot of fair issues, you know, people talk about, again, Twitter is set to accept Elon Musk's $43 billion offer. Uh, Twitter is reportedly on the verge, and it's already been confirmed. Uh, that uh, they are going to be accepting Elon Musk's uh, $43 billion bid to take the social media network private, according to a report. Twitter may announce it has accepted Musk's offer later on Monday once its board has met to recommend the transaction to Twitter shareholders, uh, sources told Rudders. Uh, the talks are fluid and the deal could still fall apart, sources added. Newsflash, it hasn't. Uh, again, we've all seen the recent reports where they have, where again, Elon Musk is running, running the show. Uh, the Monday report by Rudders uh, sent shares of Twitter soaring more than 5% in the pre-market trading on Monday. Twitter was unable to secure a so-called go shop provision from Musk, which would have allowed it to solicit other bids from potential buyers after the deal was signed, according to the report. Still, Twitter would be allowed to accept an offer from another party by paying Musk a breakup fee, the sources added. The move comes after Musk reportedly uh, met with several shareholders over the weekend and outlined the specifics of his uh, $54.20 uh, $54, uh, $54 per share bid for the social media platform, according to Rudders. Musk's outreach forced the company's board of directors to seriously consider the Tesla CEO's $43 billion takeover bid, the report said. So uh, many Twitter shareholders uh, reached out to the company over the weekend after Musk outlined a detailed financing plan for his bid on uh, Thursday and urged him not to let the opportunity for a deal slip away, according to Rudders. Uh, Twitter's board is concerned that its negotiation position would weaken if they defy their investors in the event Musk presents an attractive tender offer. Uh, Musk's insistence that his bid for Twitter is his uh, insistence uh, that uh, is his best and final has emerged as a hurdle in the deal negotiations, the sources said. Again, as we have all seen, he's now effectively owns it now. That's a recent update. Twitter's board is reportedly uh, in the talks with Musk in order to get more details on his bid um, on his bid, and see whether there is wiggle room to negotiate more favorable terms for the company, according to Rudders. Twitter has not yet decided if it will explore a sale uh, to put pressure on Musk to raise his bid, sources told Rudders. So we'll see how that plays out. So there we go. Uh, with that being said, 
I think I want to pull up this tweet right here. And let's, okay, so first let's read this tweet and then we'll do a little voting because I want to see where the audience is going to stand in this. So uh, Elon Musk tweeted this out. I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that's what free speech means. In this day and age, you're going to run into people you don't like. I'm very curious to see the follow through that Elon Musk will actually do in regards to this platform. Could he really do it? Again, this is a billionaire we're talking about. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe nothing changes at all. So let's have democracy in the chat. Do you think Elon Musk is sincere in that statement? If you think he's sincere in that statement, type 7 if you think he's sincere. Type 8 if you don't believe him at all, that this is just all a ruse and that somehow Twitter's just going to go further into the crapper. Which, again, we've all seen this before. Um, I'm very So let's actually pull up that tweet one more time with Elon Musk if we can. I just want to make sure that you know the audience able, is able to see it too and just look at that in its entirety because it's in many ways I want to see if this is true follow through and what this means for independent media whether there will actually be a true investment into well returning back to free speech returning back to some kind of sanity we'll see uh, before we pull up the next uh, final segment for this story, I just want to see where people are standing with this story. So far, seeing a lot of you vote. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if Elon Musk is going to be sincere. So there we go. Um, I want to pull up this final tweet though. I found this one to be very hilarious. It's from Shu on Head. If you haven't followed her, she has. She posts some great content. Um, she posted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess her own um, shoe on head network plus. So here we go. And she says, keep them in your prayers today. Now, who is she talking about? Well, first there's Jeff Jarvis who says today on Twitter feels like the last evening in Berlin nightclub at the twilight of the, of Weimar, Weimar, Weimar Germany. Now phase, do, do you know about the Weimar Republic? That was the government that was before Adolf Hitler and his, and, and, and his cronies took over. So this guy, this Jeff Jarvis, a blue checkmark person, someone who's authoritative and recognized by Twitter, is comparing that devastating time to some billionaire buying a social media platform where people post stupid stuff 24-7. <laughs> Oh, hold on, my chair fell down for a little bit. Ah, hold on, there we go. Faze, you make me fall apart here. All right, well, hold on, there's, there's another one from our good friend, Max Boot. I'm frightened by the impact on society and politics if Elon Musk acquires Twitter. He seems to believe that on social media, anything goes. For democracy to survive, we need more content moderation, not less. Don't worry, Twitter already does that. Remember when uh, Twitter... Uh, blocked that Hunter Biden laptop story that was uh, posted by the New York Post and Twitter and Facebook made sure that no one could share it because all of corporate media was saying that was fake news, that it was Russia, and that was fake news, and that was it. Oh, wait, the New York Times and Washington Post said that they were legit. Uh-oh, this is from David Levitt. If Elon Musk successfully purchases Twitter, it could result in World War III and the destruction of our planet. World War III? So many times we're gonna someone's gonna start World War Three. I trip and fall downstairs. I start World War Three. I buy spoiled milk. It's gonna start World War Three. I forget the keys to my house. It starts World War Three. I say hello to the chat. It starts World War Three. I say the face that he is that guy. It starts World War Three. I say World War Three and it starts World War Three. No correction. World War Four. I'm responsible for it. Anyways, and then we got this guy, Matthew Rosa, who says, uh, talking to the former head of Twitter, Dear uh, Preg Argorella, if you're reading this right now, the world needs to know that you are stronger, smarter, 
and more tenacious than Elon Musk. You're stronger, smarter, and more tenacious, buddy. This is a love letter. He thinks he can beat you. Mm-mm. No, he can't. The free world needs to know that he is wrong. Yours truly, a lifelong verified Twitter user. Chat, you got to keep them in your prayers. Got to keep the, the right now crying. This is going to start World War III. So we, need, we need more content moderation. This is like the twilight. This right now, what's happening to Twitter is the twilight days of the Weimar Republic in Germany. See, people are over panicking. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out for Twitter. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of people just, just. I think there's just a lot of people just over panicking. We'll see how this plays out. It's 50 50. Audience, with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to have a special Rockfin live stream show uh, a little bit after this uh, show because we got to get it set up. Uh, so be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, we will be making some changes starting next month. So here's what's going to be happening. The first half hour of the show will be on YouTube, and then the rest of the show will be on Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch. If you haven't subscribed to us on Odyssey, Rockfin, and Twitch, please do so. We'll be talking about more hard-hitting stories there so we don't have to worry about the jackboot of censorship. If you want to make sure that Hard Lens Media is still pushing forward, please consider being a Patreon supporter. Our Odyssey, Rockfin, Twitch, and Patreon link are all in the description box below. I want to give a huge shout-out to our tech presidents here, Faze, manning the board. Shout-out to our moderators, keeping the peace. I see we got a chat on Rockfin, so let's go ahead and acknowledge that one. Uh, Tim Sawyer, you received a $2 tip on Rockfin, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for the Rockfin uh, tip, so thank you so much, folks. Uh, and by the way, folks, um, thank you so much for supporting Hard Lens Media. We are very appreciative of all the support that we are getting on this platform. Keep on speaking truth to power and never back down. Uh, with that being said, peace to you. My name is Kip Cabello, the host of Hard Lens Media. Peace to you guys, and let us all do what we can to build a better future.